Hi guys, welcome back. So, pad shop is very, very different to maybe if you're used to a traditional synthesizer. And basically what it uses is something called granular synthesis. Now you may have heard of this, you may know what it is. If you do, then skip on to the next lesson. But if you have no idea what the heck granular synthesis is, then continue with me on this very, very quick lesson. So normal synthesis works by the tone being generated by oscillators and then you choose your wave, square, sine, whatever. And that is what generates the sound. And it plays the sound from start to finish, basically. And you can obviously change it a little bit by filters and envelopes and that kind of thing. But it basically just plays it in a normal fashion. Granular synthesis is not tone generated, it's sample based. So it has to have a sample within its bank for it to be able to play anything. That's where it gets its sound from. But the way it plays it back is very, very different. First of all, it divides or slices the audio into hundreds and thousands of tiny, tiny little slices or grains, hence the name granular synthesis. So you may be in Cubase, you've used the slice function in GrooveAsian or the make slices function within the editor, the audio editor. It's the same sort of thing, but it's doing it with very, very tiny grains. And I'm talking about anywhere between 10 and 100 milliseconds. So very, very, very small slices. And you can play one slice at a time. You can play five slices at a time. You can play them forwards, backwards, randomly. So, you know, the, the grains are kind of jumping out all over the place. And you'll see this in just a second when we go to the instrument. But basically, it's playing back those grains in any way that you choose it to do. So not in the conventional fashion. You can have the grains changing pitch, changing the start positions, lengths, and all sorts of other things. It's, it's, it's truly amazing. So let me see if I can explain granular synthesis a little bit better. And I'm just starting with the theory here, so it just makes a bit more sense when we get into the controls in the plugin itself. So I've literally just pulled in a piano sample from Cubase, which is, comes with Cubase 05 Piano A not important at all what this is we're going to take a tiny little slice so imagine this was the sample within pad shop which we'll just bring up now so you see you've got a sample here in the window so you could i could if i want to drag and drop that into there so i'm now going to take a little slice one slice as if pad shop was going to do it so i need to go to use quantize and choose a very very small quantize size, I'm using 1 64th. And I'm just gonna go into anywhere here and just create a snippet. This is a tool. And here, and get rid of the rest. So just to show you what that looks like, we've now just got a tiny sliver or grain Okay, so I'm just going to bring this to the start of the project. And I'm just going to play this to show you what we've got. So it's just a just a grain, just a snippet. So what we can do is just duplicate that. And as you'd expect, you get a kind of a waveform almost because we're repeating it so many times. And so if you think about a record player or a tape machine in the old days, where you, if you wanted to increase the pitch, you just sped it up, or if you wanted to decrease the pitch, you slowed it down. Well, the same sort of thing is happening in granular synthesis. If we halve the length of these grains, so I need to change my quantize to 128, halve these off, duplicate them, now play. So you've got a much higher pitch you see because the samples are playing back twice as fast if you like or twice as many repetitions so i'll just undo that twice much lower okay so the reason i'm showing you that you might be thinking what the hell are you showing me this for but when we come into duration so what we're talking about here is duration we'll be going through all these functions in just a second so the duration affects the pitch. This is what I'm showing you in the manual form just behind the plugin. When we mess about with the duration, the pitch changes. And it's because it's 
it's the amount of time before the next grain plays. Don't worry, we will be going through all of this, of course, many, many times throughout this course, with lots of examples as well. But what I'm showing you in the background here is how it relates to these controls. So if we were to do this kind of processing, we would normally come in and just select, or we would normally tidy up our audio so we don't get any clips or pops. So you can have fade outs and fade ins. And this is what this would sound like. And you can do that over here in the shape window. So you've got all sorts of different shapes. But that's what shape is. And we also have like a million other controls as well. So we have random start position, we have random durations, we have random lengths, along with amplifier envelopes, filter envelopes, EQs, modulation matrices, <laughs> arpeggiators, effects pay, oh, the list is seriously endless. We'll be going through all of this stuff. Just wanted to get across to you the theory, because I think that's going to help you later on in the course for sure. Otherwise, I'll be twilling all these knobs and you won't have a clue what's going on. And just one more thing while I think about it, I've only shown you one grain just multiple several times. What if you could have five or six or more grains playing at once? You can actually have up to eight grains all playing at once. And you can have the playhead literally jumping out all over the place. So I'm telling you, it's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to learn a lot. We'll do this together and uh, let's get on with it in the next lesson. See you then.